Yes, how you doing? I uh, hope you're having a great day. God, it's cold in here. <laughs> so this is going out Friday, um, which means tomorrow I'm going to Bingley. Well, Bingley's Sunday, but I'm driving up tomorrow and I'm staying overnight. So look out for me there. I've got some classic mini workshop stickers. So first come, first served. But uh, if you watch these videos, if you leave comments and you're not shy, come up and say hi. Be nice to meet some of you. Um, so a uh, little bit of a problem with today's update. So I was in the garage, which would have been last Saturday, uh, the previous Saturday, and I was in there for a good 12 hours working non-stop on Sprout all day long. I got loads done, I videoed it all, and then I went back indoors and checked the footage and I managed to corrupt the SD card which is really frustrating because I filmed some detailed bits. I've got the camera set up, all the lighting. It just all went wrong. Uh, I think what happened was I decided because I was filming all day, I thought I'd try the time that setting on the GoPro. And I must have had the settings wrong or something like that. But basically what it done, it just filled the SD card up with image files. So the SD card wasn't full, but there was... I don't know, tens of thousands of image files, and I think it overloaded the GoPro. So although I was hitting record, it, it just wasn't recording everything, uh, and it wasn't writing it to the SD card. So there was space there, wasn't going on there. So I'm pretty gutted. So let me fill you in on what's being done. And like I said, I do apologize. I don't have the footage of it, but <sighs> I tend to, when I'm recording, Sprout stuff and when we're doing the ERA stuff, it all gets filmed in uh, 2K, 60 frames a second. And I do that just because if there's any little disasters, any little bit of detail that I want to go back and slow down or, or play that individual clip and that's going to be good quality. The problem with that is the files on the SD card becomes massive. And when we're doing the ERA stuff in particular, I think Mark's got about must have about, I don't know, about eight uh, 132 gig or whatever it is, SD cards. It's got lots of them anyway, and I'll just swap them over each time. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's what happened. See loads of bits in the bench. Let me grab the camera and show you where we're up to. So I don't know where to start. So uh, the doors are on. So that means I've put the hinges in. Uh, lined it up. They will come off again, but the doors are on. I've done that. The windscreen's in. The windscreen is only in at the moment. It's not fully in. You see I've got the tape along the top there just to stop it getting dusty inside the car. Um, I was trying to cover it up with bits of paper and all sorts of stuff. Might as well just put the windscreen back in. Um, under the bonnet, I uh, can't remember what I showed last time, but we started putting bits back on now. The alternator, uh, I haven't actually painted the alternator. I've just cleaned up the aluminium on the outside of it, outside of it just with a wire wall. But started putting the rest of the bits on. Uh, let me turn around onto the workbench. Um, so this is all the stuff. It, this does take flipping ages to do. Stuff I've just been cleaning up. Um, cleaning up, painting, sort of overhauling and getting ready to go back on the car. So uh, some of the stuff like this master cylinder, that's all been taken apart. So I've taken it apart, checked the seals inside. What I actually ended up doing, so these rubbers at the bottom, they were pretty perished on the old one. The actual reservoir itself was absolutely filthy, minging, horrible gunk inside. So I actually swapped that with the, do you remember I replaced the one on Vinny? I kept all the old bits because I thought I might be able to use them one day. So I did. Um, done the same with the clutch master cylinder. So that's all been apart and put back together again. Check the seals and everything are okay. The rest of the stuff, I had to do some repair work. So this is the bracket for the uh, for the coolant bottle, coolant expansion bottle. Uh, so both of these studs were broken off. 
So what I had to do was drill them out, um, grind them flat and just weld on some captive bolts. Uh, what else? Uh, this bit actually I thought was beyond repair. It was really, really rotten that was, but I've cleaned it up, hammer it, it's okay. Servo was pretty bad, but that's all been cleaned up now. Um, yeah, everything really. I couldn't do this clutch housing breather. Look, it's actually got holes in it where it's corroded through, which is quite amazing because they're usually covered in oil. So I need a new one of them. Hopefully I can pick one of them up at Bingley. Everything else, so things like the engine steady has been cleaned up, painted, and I fitted new bushes in it as well. I, I did was actually a little bit surprised that these bushes feel a little bit loose in here. They were quite easy to press in. I thought it'd be difficult, but they are from mini spares. They should be all right. And even other stuff I've just had to repair as we go along. This actually had two additional holes in it where the bolts have been broken. So they drilled some new holes and put self tappers in. So I had to weld them, grind the welds down uh, and then obviously paint it. So that's back looking normal. Um, yeah, and all that lot's ready to go back on now. So next up, let me show you the inside of the car. So the top dash rail's back in. Uh, and, uh, and again, unfortunately, I videoed that. So the captive bolts, nuts, or the, the studs were broken either side on the dash. So that fits on down. And there's a couple of studs that go down with nuts that go on them. They're broken off each side. So I did film it again, but unfortunately I can't show it. Um, so I drilled them out, uh, welded new studs on there. Uh, I gave the dash a quick wipe over as well. It's actually come up pretty good. I'm quite pleased with that. Obviously, it's still got a bit of cracking on the um, laminated wood and that sort of thing. Patina, that's what you call it, isn't it? Um, I'm not going to be replacing the dash at the moment. It's okay for the time being. It gives me something to do in the future, doesn't it? Uh, and I just cleaned up all the wiring and everything behind. Cleaned up the radio wiring a bit because that was a bit of a mess. Um, yeah, and got the dash back in. I think I'd already mentioned about the floor, just painting some body colour on the bits that have been primed and welded. Uh, gear lever is back in. Uh, what else? The other bit I've done was the exhaust, or exhaust, as Alex Toon would say. Um, and I was just showing that, I time-lapsed that. So it's a Janspeed original exhaust, and being stainless steel, obviously, I've spent a bit of time with a bit of auto sole, some light wire wool and some polishing cloth and clean that all up nicely. So it looks lovely, but unfortunately you guys are not really gonna see me cleaning that, are you? And then another bit I couldn't film. So all the underside is back together now. Um, yeah, you can't see much from there, but that exhaust front pipe. So I had mentioned in previous videos, about fitting an LCB on it. Uh, I'm not gonna do that, not at this stage, just because LCBs are about 140 odd quid now. So they're expensive. That exhaust I got for this, it's a pattern part. It's new though, it cost 26 quid. That might have even been including postage, which is just phenomenal. Uh, and it fitted okay. The only thing I did do, uh, the welds, on the downpipe, the flange between the exhaust manifold and downpipe were really messy, way too big, restricting the flow a bit. So I used, just used a die grinder to grind them out and match them to the exhaust manifold. It'll probably make about 0 0.01 brake horsepower difference, but it gives me the satisfaction that it's uh, made a bit better anyway. Uh, so that was about it. Um, yeah, about 12 and a half hours working on it. Um, and yeah, it doesn't seem like I've got a lot done, but I, I, yeah, it's, I'm getting to the stage now where all the horrible, messy work is done. There's still one bit I'm really not looking forward to, uh, and that's the wiring loom. So I've done the um, the sort of bulkhead part of the wiring loom. I still need to do the engine bay wiring loom, uh, and it's I know it's just horrible, messy. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do it yet. I might sneak it into the showering doors and use the shower, but. Don't tell my missus that if you see her at Bingley. I'll do that when she's at work. Um, <laughs> uh, and for now, um, let me just get all these bits back on. I'm not going to time lapse it and rejoin me in a minute when they're back on. 
One final bit I thought I'd mention, all of this stuff obviously has been painted with, it's either hammer, it, it's mainly hammerite actually, hammerite smootherite. Uh, it takes a while to dry at the best of the times, but honestly in this weather, it takes flipping ages. So I've been restricted a little bit because I've been painting bits in here, waiting until they're tacky and then sneaking them in and putting them in the airing cupboard. Uh, and even overnight in there, they're, they're still only just about touch dry the next day. Hammerite is great. I love Hammerite smooth right, but it gives a great finish. Uh, it covers really well, but it just takes forever to dry. Right, bit of an experiment here. So I'm cleaning up the coil pack at the moment. I've taken all the leads off. I'm going to throw these leads away because you can see they've gone all green and corroded inside. They're naff leads anyway, so they're going in the bin. Uh, but I did notice on the coil itself, I doubt if I need to shine a light. No, I don't. Can you see all that corrosion down in the actual holes where the coil leads go? Well, that's going to cause a problem. So <clears throat> I am going to try to clean them out with some Sarsen's vinegar. Do you think it'll work? I honestly do not know myself, but it's acidic and I'm hoping that it'll just dissolve that crap in there. Um, so let's give it a go. I think I'll leave it overnight and we'll see what it looks like tomorrow. What do you reckon? What do we reckon then chaps? Do you reckon the old Sarsen's malt vinegar trick worked? I'm not so sure because, uh, yeah. Ooh, it might have done something. Nah, not really. I wouldn't say that was particularly successful. It's cleaned it out a bit. So next question is, how am I going to clean that out? Hopefully, there we go. So, does that fit down in there? Not quite. Um. Hmm. We might just trim up this uh, wire wheel. Right, well, just to summarise, sarsen malt vinegar doesn't work. <laughs> Tiny little wire brush down there on a drill works a treat, though. That's all nicely cleaned up. So we try this stuff so you don't have to. Keep the sarsens on your chips. Right then. So I think that concludes this episode. Uh, the engine bay is starting to look like a typical MPI engine bay again. Really cluttered little bit messy uh, there's a few bits i can't do at the moment so i managed to damage the bottom hose when i was moving it around when i was when it was running um basically i let the coolant bottle drop and the bottom hose rubbed through on the alternator pulley or the water pump pulley so uh yeah that's cost me some money that has um what else i haven't got a wiper motor in yet because obviously it's got to be painted and the uh, bits for the wiper motor have got to come out so that'll probably go in afterwards which is a bit of a pain honestly because um i much prefer to be doing it now and obviously it's got no wiring loom in there yet so there's yeah there's still more stuff to fit under there and the radiator in the front but we're getting there it's starting to look like a complete engine bay again and the bit I've not been looking forward to, so I've got the engine harness laid out here. It's not actually as bad as I thought, to be honest, but it does all want redoing. All the PVC tape on it is just, um, yeah, it's no longer sticky. It's starting to peel off. Plugs and that are filthy. 
these will all get us probably the same treatment as I've done before, which is just dunk them in some um, some gunk, a little pot of gunk. The only thing you do have to be careful on the see if I can find one. So the rubber seals down inside, so you can see the orange rubber seal in there. If you get gunk on that, it it causes that seal to swell up. So when you're cleaning them, you have to get the seal out first, clean it, and then put the seal back in. Um, the only other oddity with this loom, um, oh, I didn't notice that before. So it said, uh, oh, that's just a harness repair for the, that's the temperature sender. I don't know, it's even got a Delphi sticker on it. Um, so yeah, you, I'm sure they, they've done a harness repair as a recall early on on minis and the only other thing which is really weird actually this is the alternator ind wire which seems to be run all by itself for some reason it was almost like they made the loom and then someone forgot to put that wire in but it it does it has got a connector in it so it's a bit weird i don't know why they've done that so anyway uh that's it for this episode um so uh this is going out uh saturday uh saturday friday i don't know uh but anyway <laughs> it's, it's going out friday so i'm off up to bingley tomorrow so hopefully see you uh some of you viewers there but um have a safe trip if you're traveling up and yeah come and uh, say hi